the terrifying moment. Armed suspects besiege a young, beautiful wife and mom in broad daylight at a busy intersection, ram her and carjack her. I'm Nancy Grace. Thank you for joining us here at MSN. A manhunt for a Florida mom kidnapped in broad daylight at a busy intersection. Listen. April 10th, a tow truck driver was murdered in Orange County. Uh, at that scene, a green vehicle matching the description of this green vehicle uh, was located. And there was more than 100 rounds fired at that location. One of the rounds found at the scene were 10 millimeter rounds, which is again, uh, an incredibly unique and uncommon round for us to see out on the streets. I got to figure something out. What does a tow truck, a hundred rounds of 10 millimeter ammo and a green Acura have to do with a beautiful young mom who is kidnapped in broad daylight at a busy intersection? Joining me to very special guest, number one, Jennifer Torres, senior investigative reporter at GulfLive.com, and Irv Brandt, former U.S. Marshal Service, International Investigations, author of Flying Solo, Top of the World. You can find him at IrvBrandt.com. Jennifer Torres, what happened? Well, it appears that Catherine, who is from Homestead, Florida, left her home at about noon and headed um, north to um, the area of Winter Springs, where at about just before six, she realized that she was being followed and she called her husband and let him know. And his advice was, don't stop, don't stop. Um, according to Seminole County I'm Sheriff. Trying, though, Jennifer Torres, I'm trying to figure out what that has to do with an April 10 murder of a tow truck driver in Orange County. Guys, take a listen to Dave Mack. Catherine Aguas Vivas is on a road trip from her home in Homestead, Florida, which is south of Miami, to Central Florida to visit with friends. After going through Orlando, Aguas Vivas calls her husband Miguel in a panic. She tells him that she's in Winter Springs and there's a green Acura running into her back bumper. He tells her not to stop, keep driving, but neither of them call 911. At 5.30 p.m., Aguas Vivas stops for a traffic light at the intersection at East Lake Drive and Tuscaloosa Road. What goes down next is caught on camera by a witness. A man dressed in all black gets out of the Acura and approaches the driver's side of Aguas Vivas Dodge Durango and threatens her with a gun. He forces his way inside, climbing into the back seat, forcing Catherine Aguas Vivas to drive. The eyewitness calls 911. Whoa, okay, it seems to me this was not your typical carjack, which is at random. To Irv Brandt joining us, formerly of the U.S. Marshal Service International Investigations Branch. Irv, here's a guy dressed ninja style in a black hoodie and black shoes, dark jeans. I, I believe he was following this woman. Now, that is not your typical carjack. It is not your typical abduction and someone was so worried about it, they videoed it. This was planned. I agree, Nancy. And the weapon that he was using, uh, just from what I can see, is a military-style weapon. The earlier reports were of a 10-millimeter round, and if that's a 10-millimeter-style weapon, it's probably a copy or maybe even a straw bog. But it's a military-style weapon, and you don't see them uh, on the streets very often. Okay, I'm talking to you about this being a planned event. This is not uh, somebody driving by saying, wow, I like that Acura. I'm taking it with my gun. This is planned. The guy is dressed up uh, sleuth style, criminal style, in all, all black. He stops in broad daylight. If I'm going to carjack something, I'm going to do it at night, not while somebody can video me for Pete's sake. I think this is more about getting Catherine Aguaviva as opposed to anything else. Do you agree or disagree? That's what I'm asking you about. Because if it is targeted, that lower, that greatly reduces my suspect pool. I, I definitely agree, Nancy. 
the uh, the way that they did it. They weren't trying to carjack a seven year old Dodge Durango. They were obviously going for this woman. They were going for the kidnap of this woman, and they had planned it. You know, rammed her so she would stop. Then he forced his way into the back seat. He didn't pull her out of the vehicle and throw her onto the street to take the vehicle. They wanted her, not the vehicle. Absolutely correct. Now take a listen to this. Carjacked and kidnapped, Catherine Aguas Vivas drives off toward the Seminole Orange County line. Less than two hours after the carjacking kidnapping, witnesses near a construction site of Boggy Creek Road report hearing gunshots and seeing smoke. Investigators rush to the scene and find an SUV on fire and a dead body inside. Dental records and DNA are needed to confirm that police have just found Catherine Aguas Vivas. Officials find a dozen 10 millimeter handgun shells at the scene and the same type shells found a day before at the murder of tow truck driver Juan Garcia. Or Brent, I'm going to circle back to you in a moment about the fact that the ballistics tests reveal the 10 millimeter ammo found at the scene where Catherine, this young mom and wife, was murdered, match the murder scene of a tow truck driver. That's what the tow truck driver murder has to do with Catherine. But first, I want to go back to Jennifer Torres, senior investigative reporter, GulfLive.com. Jennifer, tell me about the discovery less than two hours after Catherine's carjack and kidnapping Shots ring out. Investigators rush to the scene to find an SUV on fire and a dead body inside. That body is Catherine. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. And um, although the sheriff didn't positively ID her, he said he was very confident it was her. The car was burned beyond recognition and so were the remains. But he said he's confident that it was her. Okay, it... it, it is contrary to everything I know about carjack or carjack murders. Typically, uh, Irv Brandt, the victim, is useful. They're, they're irrelevant. They want the vehicle. As you were saying earlier, it was more about getting her. They didn't want the vehicle. That's correct, Nancy. Whatever the reason, whatever the motive behind, it wasn't theft. They wanted this woman for some reason. And when they finished with her, they killed her. Then they burned the vehicle. So the vehicle was never the intention. Theft was never the intention. Guys, it goes on. And all of this is tying back to the murder of a tow truck driver. Listen. The search for the green Acura ends after investigators find the vehicle at an Orange County apartment complex. Turns out, on March 19th, the same green Acura was reportedly towed by truck driver Juan Garcia from an apartment complex. Three weeks later, the same green car, according to police, was at the scene when Juan Garcia was murdered on April 10th. The next day, April 11th, the green Acura is seen ramming a Dodge Durango driven by Catherine Aguas Vivas before an unidentified man gets out of the Acura and carjacks and kidnaps Aguas Vivas at gunpoint. Rounds of ammunition found at the scene of Juan Garcia's murder match some rounds found where Aguas Vivas was killed. And, you know, back, back to you, Jennifer Torres, uh, investigative reporter, GulfLive.com. Jennifer, matching up ballistics or bullets... Um, is very similar to matching up fingerprints. There is no replica. When a bullet is fired, it hurls down the barrel of a gun, be it a long gun, a handgun, anything, even a little twenty-two. And every gun itself is different because as it is created, it burns you know, hot metal, Burning metal cools, and it cools with certain ridges and dots on the inside of the barrel. Unlike the outside, which is smooth and shiny, the inside is rough. When a bullet hurls down that barrel, it striates. In other words, the bullet hits against the inside of the barrel and makes identifiable and unique striation marks only peculiar to that weapon. So we know 100% that 
no question, the bullets found near Catherine's body match the bullets found by the tow truck driver, the same weapon fired both. Now, I understand the weapon. Now I need to understand this green Acura. Where has it been spotted? Because to me, that is going to be the key to solving this case. Where all has this green Acura been spotted? All right, so what's unique about the Acura, it's a 2002 green Acura, and there's only three in the entire state of Florida. And uh, authorities were able to determine that two had been salvaged, so that leaves just one in the state. So through VIN number search, they were able to find this green Acura. And apparently it had been sold by a couple um, who lived in Winter Springs to a car lot and then to an auto auction, but the paperwork was never completed. So it, was, it didn't have tags, it didn't have proper tags on it. And um, it ended up in March being towed um, for being parked illegally. So this car has been around Florida with no official license documentation Sheriff said if any license was on it, it was um, a stolen license. Okay, let me hear that family tree again on the Acura. It was bought, then sold, then what? Just start at the beginning. What? All right, so the car itself, the original owners are from Renter Springs, Florida. And they didn't have enough time to complete the transfer of title, apparently. At least that's what's been told to authorities and they never came back to finish the additional paperwork. So the car lot where they um, sold it to, um, transferred it to an auto auction. And the timing of this, it, it looks like uh, they did that in December. So last December, it ended up at this auto dealership and then to an auction. And um, so the first time authorities had contact with this particular car was March 19th, when it was towed from an Orlando apartment complex. And um, it was parked illegally and uh, the sheriff said no tag at the time. So it was towed. And that tow truck driver is um, the gentleman who was found murdered the day before this incident at the intersection in Winter Springs. Now, let me understand something. Have either of you ever been to an auto auction? I've been to many of them in my search for getaway cars, cars that have been spotted at crime scenes, but we can't find the car. You guys ever been to an auto auction? It's like all H E W L breaks loose. There are hundreds and hundreds of people there to get really awesome deals on great vehicles. It's crazy. So I'm trying to figure out, Irv Brandt, how this vehicle that keeps popping up <laughs> on the scenes of felonies got from an auto auction with no paperwork to being illegally parked in an apartment complex. How'd that happen? Well, Nancy, the vehicle is the key to the case. That's what connects both incidents is the vehicle. The vehicle was towed and then released. Then the tow truck driver was killed. It was obvious. It's obvious to me, and it's going to be obvious to the investigators in Florida that something was taken out of that vehicle, probably drugs or money. They went and they killed, and not only did they kill them, they fired a hundred, they started a war and fired a hundred rounds. Then in that same vehicle, as we're watching the video, they take the Durango and same thing. They were obviously looking for what was ever stolen out of that Acura. That's what connects the two events. It's this car because the murder victim, Juan Garcia, murdered April 10, was the tow truck driver that takes the vehicle from the apartment complex. So he's murdered. And then the very next day, April 11, that green Acura rams Catherine's Durango. So take a listen to Sheriff Dennis Lima. Seminole County. What's unique about a 2002 green Acura in the state of Florida, there were only three in the state of Florida. Uh, two had been salvaged and only one existed uh, in the state. When we look at records, uh, the first time authorities came in contact with this was when it was towed on March 19th from an Orlando apartment complex. Uh, the car was backed in, parked illegally, uh, probably had no tag on it at the time and it was towed from an Orange County apartment complex on March 19th. 
the tow truck driver of that uh, particular tow of this vehicle was a murder victim in Orange County that happened one day before our kidnapping murder. What more do we know? What more do we know? Listen to Crime Online's Dave Mack. Investigators have been combing over the green Acura tied to the murders of both Juan Garcia and Catherine Aguasviva, but they haven't located the killer or killers yet. So far, there's only a minimal description of one of the people involved in the carjack kidnap and murder of Aguas Viva, a white or Hispanic male wearing all black clothing and a mask. Investigators are warning the public, saying, don't approach these individuals. They should be perceived as armed and dangerous and are still on the loose. That's right. This was targeted. And let me understand one more thing. Jennifer, Jennifer Torres joining us from GolfLive.com. After Catherine called her husband to report being rammed from behind. Did he or she call 911? No, and that's a uh, very strange. In fact, it's reported that Catherine's phone was turned off immediately after that exchange with her husband. So I understand why she didn't call 911 because she was kidnapped. If you know or think you know anything about the murder of Catherine Aguaviva, a young mother leaving behind a six-year-old child, or tow truck driver Luis Centron Garcia, please dial this number, 800-423-TIPS, 800-423-8477, toll free, 800-423-8477. We can't help Catherine or Luis, but we can help their children by getting justice.